Hey everybody out there, James here. How are you doing? It's been so long. All right, enough catching up. It's time to get down to business. We're gonna try something a little different than usual, a hardware review of Nintendo's newest handheld, the 3DS XL. Over the course of the summer, I've had the good fortune to pick up the newest iteration in the DS family, and I've had some extensive time with the handheld. And on the whole, my not-so-professional opinion is positive. So let's get started with the most apparent change, the size. It's quite obvious that the XL's new screens are much larger than its predecessors. Here, yeah. In fact, they're nearly double the screen real estate of the original 3DS. Now this really helps pull you into the games that you're playing, as a sense of immersion is accented by the almost encompassing size of the new screens. The size of the system also makes it that much more comfortable in adult hands than the cramped sort of feel you might get with a smaller 3DS. As a side note, the matte finish paint job really grew on me after a while. The 3D effect is also that much more engrossing with the new system, and in the more in graphically impressive games out now, it's hard not to feel sucked in. However, though the sizes of both screens have increased roughly 90%, the resolution has stayed the same. This means that though you'll notice an increase in scope, you won't necessarily be seeing an increase in sharpness. This is one of the more annoying aspects of the update, as characters viewed from a far distance still appear rather pixelated and hard to make out. This is doubly true if you're playing any old DS titles on the new system, it can be a bit of a nuisance. Speaking of annoying decisions in the design, the 3DS XL lacks a second analog stick. If you have picked up the Circle Pad Pro, you'll understand my frustration. Many people, myself included, speculated that the next DX would include a second analog stick to facilitate the gameplay involved in such titles as Kid Icarus Uprising and Resident Evil Revelations. Sadly, this is not the case. Instead, the 3DS XL purchasers are in the same situation as the purchasers of the original 3DS, occasionally having to deal with clumsy controls that could have been easily avoided. Though we should be expecting another form of the Circle Pad Pro to be released for the 3DS XL, so just be patient. The speakers have also taken a hit, as the increase in screen real estate left less room for other gadgetry. The speakers work for most situations, but even in a moderately crowded room, you'll still have to strain to hear dialogue and background music. This can be solved with a simple pair of headphones, however. Still, don't expect fantastic sound quality. And in fact, with the last iteration, the camera still leaves something to be desired. On the plus side, the game library for both the 3DS and the 3DS XL is growing in strength each month. And with many ex exciting titles already out and more on the way, this is definitely where the new system shines. The presentation of newer games is that much more impressive on a larger handheld. Couple that with Nintendo's virtual console that allows you to download games from consoles past and you've got a hefty lineup. So there you have it. Aside from some missed opportunities and design choices, Nintendo once again excels with quality handheld worthy of consideration. I'm sorry for that pun. But with the increased screen size, a new sleek looking model, and an extensive lineup of quality games, it makes gaming on the go that much more fun. I give the 3DS XL an 8 out of 10. Now if you'll excuse me, my Pokemon need me. <laughs>